Hey everybody, welcome to our first lecture on the area of work and energy. And in this one we're going to focus particularly on the idea of work. Okay. Now, we use this term all the time, working, you know, doing some sort of work, doing some sort of thing. It implies obviously doing something. But how do we define work in terms of physics? Well, work itself is defined as the amount of change a force can cause. Okay, so right away you have to cause some sort of change. In other words, if you go up and push as hard as you can on the wall, it doesn't go anywhere. So you're actually not doing any work because the wall doesn't go anywhere. You're not changing it. Of course, you also get tired at the same time. Now, if we remember from action-reaction, if I apply a force to the wall, the wall pushes back on me, which means that it's causing my muscles to contract. So that is causing a change. So although I'm not doing any work on the wall, the wall is actually doing some work on me. So there has to be some sort of change that occurs. So how does that work? Well, let's look at a simulation. OK, in this example here, we're going to work on a frictionless surface. And we're going to move this filing cabinet here by applying a continuous 20 Newton force. Okay, so let's watch what happens. Okay, clearly it starts to move. We're affecting some sort of change. Okay. Now notice that the amount of force remains constant at 20 newtons. But look down here at this idea of work. That seems to be getting larger and larger and larger as it moves farther and farther and farther. So what does that mean? Now, if you'll notice here, we've moved um, a little over 10 meters here, about 10.28 meters. So Work clearly has something to do with the amount of force that was applied there. But also it seems to increase as distance increases. So clearly distance seems to be involved in the idea of work. And those two are really what work is all about. So work is the product of force and displacement. Now there's something interesting in math. Remember, force is a vector. It has direction. Displacement is a vector. It also has direction. But when you multiply two vectors together, you actually get a scalar value, which means work doesn't have a direction. It's not a vector. Now, that gives us an equation for work. Work is force times displacement when we're moving into the horizontal direction. The unit of work is a capital J for the joule, so all work is measured in joules. So from that simulation, we had someone who was going to push on a 100 kilogram filing cabinet or crate with a continuous 20 newton force. And we move it for 10 meters across the floor continuously. Again, assuming no friction. Well, since work is force times displacement, and in this case, the amount of force is 20 newtons, the amount of displacement is 10 meters, well, then the work. is 200 joules, which is basically about what we saw in that simulation. Now notice something that didn't come into play here. The mass. That didn't seem to really matter in this case. And it doesn't. It really just matters the amount of force, really the amount of net force, and the displacement at which it moves. It's not too complicated, right? Let's look at an example. In this case, we're looking at a pitcher. It's going to throw a fastball, or maybe not so fastball. Uh, and if you ever watch someone pitch, they don't simply just toss the ball. They start back here at rest, and then they accelerate the ball forward with their arm, often stretching out really far, until they release it. In this case, we're going to release the ball at 20 meters per second. Now the question is, well, how much work is done in this process of throwing the ball? Now notice, it doesn't matter where the ball ends up going, because the force and the work only occur while the ball is in the pitcher's hand. So how far it goes doesn't really matter. So to get work, we need two things, force and displacement. All right, well, here we're saying that the pitcher stretches his arm two meters while throwing the ball. So I've got displacement. The problem is. I don't have force. OK, well, how can I get force? Well, 
we're applying a singular force. So I can go to Newton's second law, F equals ma. Well, that should be easy enough because here I've got the mass. So I'm all set, right? No, I'm not. I don't have acceleration. I always seem to need that acceleration, don't I? Well, I do have initial velocity, final velocity, and displacement. In other words, I don't have time. So let's go to our good old time unknown. Vs squared equals Vs squared plus 2ax. Now I can get acceleration. My final velocity is 20, what it's released at. Began at rest. And the displacement, the acceleration occurred over those two meters of moving the ball. That's 400. That's 4. And so we get an acceleration of 100 meters per second squared. Really big acceleration but it's a really short distance. Now that I've got acceleration, I can get force. I've got a mass of 0.2, an acceleration of 100, which gives me a force of 20 newtons. And now that I've got the force, I can figure out how much work was done. 20 newton force acting over 2 meters, means there was 40 joules of work done in throwing that ball. Wow, did we just combine motion, force, and work all into one problem? Isn't physics awesome? Let's look at a different example. In this case, we have a 50 kilogram crate that we're going to move 10 meters across the floor in 20 seconds. And again, the idea is, well, how much work is done there. Now, you cannot say that this was moved at a constant velocity, because that wouldn't be true. It's an unbalanced force that's applied, so we can't move at a constant velocity. Starting off again with the idea that work is force times displacement. I've got my displacement. I need my force. Okay? And F equals MA will help me get my force. It's a singular force. Okay, got my mass, but I need my acceleration. Now, time unknown won't work here because I didn't say I stopped at that moment. Um, and that's basically it. But I do have time, so why would I need time unknown? So the best equation to probably apply here is my displacement equation. Displacement is initial velocity times time plus one half acceleration times time squared. Displacement of 10 meters, starting from rest. For 20 seconds. So this is 200 times A. Or I get an acceleration of 0.05 meters per second squared. Low acceleration. Once I have that, I can come get my force, 50, times an acceleration of 0.05, force of 2.5 newtons. And then once I have my force, I can get my work, which is 25 joules of work. Okay. So again, Acceleration seems an important thing. Force an even more important thing in determining the idea of work. Now, the kind of work we we're just looking at is horizontal work. But instead, let's say we want to take a crate, and with our unusually long arms, we are going to lift it up to a certain height above the ground. And we really want to know how much work is involved in doing this, in making this thing go upward. Okay? And now, to make our lives easy, let's assume we're going to lift at a constant velocity. Well, let's look at the free body diagram real quick. Of course, we have the weight, gravity pulling it down. And then we have whatever lifting force we're acting up. Now notice I didn't put a normal force because it's not on the ground. We're lifting it 
from one point up to another. If we were to sum our forces, well, we'd have the lifting force up minus the weight down equals ma. But since we said constant velocity, that means there's no acceleration. And so the lifting force would be the same thing as the weight. It would be equal, okay, because I've already got it in motion. Now, if work is defined as force times distance, well, the force I applied is the same as the weight. So wherever force is, I can, in this case, replace it with mg in my algebra. And the distance I'm lifting it is the same as the height. And so what that gives me is a relationship for how to determine work when I'm lifting something in the vertical direction. This is known as work against gravity. Okay? When I move something in the vertical direction, I'm doing work against gravity. Now that means whether I'm lifting it up or lowering it back down, because I have to apply a force, otherwise it just free falls. Um, that's working against gravity. So the force is based on the weight, because that's what we're lifting or lowering, and the displacement is based on the height. And so this gives us a special equation for work against gravity. Work against gravity is equal to mass times gravity times height, mgh. And it's still measured in joules. So for example, let's say you're going to do a little weightlifting. And you've got two 40 kilogram weights on the side of the bar. We won't count the weight of the bar. And you're going to lift it straight up over your head. And let's say that total height is 2.2 meters straight up over your head. How much work do you do? Well, the work, since we're lifting, is mgh. We have a total of 80 kilograms of mass, the two added together. Gravity is 10, and the height is 2.2 meters. And that means you do 1,760 joules of work in lifting it up. Now, here's another question. Let's say you lower it back down to the ground. Well, it would be the same weight covering the same distance, and so you would do the same amount of work. So the way you double your workout is you lift something up at a constant velocity and you lower it at a constant velocity. Because if you just let it go, it's free fall and you're not doing any work at all. It's gravity is just simply yanking it to the ground. Okay, so that's the basic idea of work. Uh, work is the amount of change a force can cause. Uh, it's based on applying a force over a certain distance. Um, in the horizontal, it's force times distance. In the vertical, it's mass times gravity times height. See you next time.